Okay, let's now consider non-symmetric airfoils. So cambered airfoils. This is section 4.8 of your text. So recall our fundamental equation. 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to C of gamma x minus C cz equals the infinity alpha minus cz dx. Now, for a cambered airfoil, cz dx is generally not zero. Now again, so then the solution of this equation is again beyond the scope here, but using the same transformation as before, we can get the solution to be gamma of theta equals two v theta, a constant a naught times one plus cos theta over sine theta plus an infinite series of coefficients a n times sine n theta where again theta is zero at the leading edge and theta is pi at the trailing edge. So, if I just write this out again, copy it over. This first term is similar to the symmetric airfoil solution. Right, we have the one plus cos theta over sine theta. From this we can say that A naught depends on angle of attack and dz dx. This term is a Fourier sine series. So the a n depend also on alpha and dz dx. So these coefficients must result in the camber line being a streamline of the flow. So again, using our substitution, c equals one, uh, sorry, c over two, one minus cos theta, and doing some integration, we can get the following results: that a naught minus the sum of this infinite series. is alpha minus dz dx, uh, where this theta naught is defined for a specific x location, defined for a specific x location as equal to c over 2, 1 minus cos theta naught. So this is to differentiate it from theta, which is related to the dummy variable of integration c. Then dz dx is alpha minus a naught plus
the infinite series term. And again, this is for a given x. Now, recall that dz dx is just a function of theta naught from the definition of theta naught. So now the equation has become a Fourier cosine series expansion for dz dx. So we can write f of theta is some b naught plus infinite series n equals 1 b sub n cos theta. Where b naught is given by this integral. So this is like an average value of f of theta. And bn is 2 over pi integral 0 to pi f of theta cos n theta d theta. Just from plugging in what we had before. So we get that alpha minus a naught is 1 over pi integral 0 to pi dz dx d theta naught so a naught is alpha minus 1 over pi integral 0 to pi dz dx d theta naught this is like the angle of attack minus the average camber angle. So this is like an effective angle of attack. So to get the aerodynamic coefficients, with coefficient, etc. Circulation will be integral of the strength, which you can write as follows. So circulation is C to the infinity A naught integral zero to pi one plus cos theta D theta plus the infinite series A N sine N theta times sine theta d theta. And this looks awful. But the integral from 0 to pi of 1 plus cos theta d theta is just pi. And the integral of 0 to pi of sine n theta sine theta d theta only has two possible values pi over 2 if n equals 1 and 0 otherwise and that means we can dramatically simplify this expression and instead write that the circulation is c the infinity pi a naught plus pi over 2 a1. No more infinite series. So then the lift per unit span, so 
of course, and the kind of Joukowsky theorem, rho infinity v infinity uh, gamma. So that's rho infinity v infinity squared c pi a naught plus pi over 2 a1. And the lift coefficient, which is L prime over 1 half rho infinity v infinity squared c times 1, is just pi 2 a naught plus a1. So if we put in the expansions for a naught and a1, we can get that CL is 2 pi alpha plus 1 over pi. Again, this term that looks something like a average camber angle. So that the lift slope, A naught, which is D, DL, the alpha, is again just 2 pi. Because only this term depends on the angle of attack. This term depends only on the airfoil geometry. So for the lift coefficient, the second term is new compared to the symmetric airfoil uh, case. So let's think about the significance of this second term. So it contains an integral. What it means is the airfoil will have some angle of attack for zero lift, for positive camber, that's less than zero. So this means that the lift coefficient, CL, is the lift slope DCL D alpha times alpha minus some angle of attack for zero lift. And the slope we determine with just two pi where the zero lift angle of attack is given by this expression z d v z dx cos theta naught minus one d theta naught. So this integral is minus the angle of zero lift. So despite the complexity of the development of thin airfoil theory for cambered airfoils, ultimately it comes down to evaluating a single integral for a given airfoil which does not depend on the angle of attack and depends only on the airfoil geometry. Finally, for the moments, the moment coefficient about the leading edge will be minus pi over 2 a naught plus a1. Now here we need to evaluate the second term a2. And the moment coefficient about the quarter chord point is pi over 4 a2 minus a1. So for a cambered airfoil, we can see that the quarter chord point is not the center of pressure as the moment coefficient is non-zero there.
final note here, A2 and A1 are again not functions of the angle of attack. They depend only on the airflow of geometry. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the moment coefficient at the quarter chord point is also not a function of angle of attack. So this tells us that the quarter chord point is the theoretical aerodynamic center of the airfoil. And the location of the center of pressure we can also write down XCT is C over 4 times 1 plus pi over CL A1 minus A2. And because CL is in there, this does vary with the angle of attack. Okay, so now we've gone through and developed thin airfoil theory both for symmetric airfoils and for cambered airfoils. And despite some complex math, the results are quite simple and powerful. And you'll be using these results in the second part of the first homework and also uh, somewhat in the mini project on non-thin airfoils that we'll be looking at soon. And we'll talk more about the vortex panel methods needed to numerically solve for the flow around those airfoils next time.